So we know that IFR has certain benefits over FFR. FFR uses a vasodilator such as adenosine in order to increase the coronary flow in order to measure accurately. The downside of using adenosine is, of course, the side effects and the costs associated with that. IFR, instantaneous wafer ratio, is a resting gradient where they look at the diastolic blood flow. So there are certain benefits such as cost, less discomfort for the patient in using IFR. Uh, and, and previously, there have been up to six random, uh, sorry, six validation trials that looked at ischemia and found that IFR is all those cases equally good and in two cases actually better than FFR when it comes to detecting ischemia. So there's quite a good scientific foundation to say that IFR should be as good as FFR. The problem is that there weren't any outcome trials. In order to really get a good clinical depth, you need to do an outcome trial. So IFR Sweetar is that. We're testing IFR versus FFR in terms of clinical outcome for 12 months, the composite of death, MI, and unplanned revascularization. So this is an RRCT, a register-based randomized clinical trial. So it's not a registry, but rather we're using the, the uniqueness of the Scandinavian registries where we're able to track all patients in terms of death, MI, and also angiography and PCI. So we're using that register-based framework. In Sweden, every, uh, every doctor uh, who performs an angiography and PCI punches in the data patient-specific data into an online web registry. And we tapped into that using that framework and created a randomization module, which really allowed us to lower the threshold for inclusion. So we added a small uh, randomization module. So if the patient had stable angina, unstable angina, or non stemmy it popped up, said, is the patient eligible for a randomization IFR sweetheart trial? You clicked on yes, a few more questions popped up, you clicked on randomize, and you got the randomization outcome. So you went back to the table and did your IFR, FFR, guided revascularization, and you went back and punched in the data as you usually do. So this is the uniqueness of this means that we can lower the costs uh, to conduct a red, uh, randomized trial, but we can also lower the threshold for inclusion of patients, but also we have an excellent means of tracking patients. And indeed, in our trial, no patients were lost to follow up. So what we found, we randomized 2,037 patients in the trial to IFR or FFR guided revascularization. And we found that the 12-month composite endpoint was 6.1% in the FFR group and 6.7% in the IFR group. And this was a non-inferiority designed trial, so we were not looking for superiority, but the statistical analysis showed that we well met the non-inferiority margin. So we found that IFR was non-inferior to FFR. So what we also found was that the level of chest discomfort from the procedure decreased, oh well, sorry, was reduced significantly. Only 3% in the IFR group experienced some sort of chest discomfort from the procedure stemming from the revascularization procedure itself and not IFR, where 68.3% of the patients in the FFR group displayed various degrees of discomfort from the procedure. So, also, we found that uh, somewhat less stents were putting in the IFR group than in the FFR group. But looking at the unplanned revascularization rates among the deferred patient, we didn't see any difference in those rates. So we could safely say that IFR is not inferior to FFR in terms of 12-month outcome, but also it improved uh, the patient outcome in terms of discomfort from the procedure. We also reduced the level of stenting somewhat, but did not affect the outcome. 